All right. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. So I'm a software engineer, and I'm here to talk about open source knitting machine software and hardware. Um, but to understand how cool this is, you need so much context. So let's start at the beginning. 4,400 BC. <laughs> This is the first evidence we have of a weaving loom from Egyptian pottery. And why does this matter? Uh, we'll get to that. But I have had so many engineers try to explain this to me and get it wrong. So we're all going to learn today. Let's speed run some textile history. In 1589, we get the first knitting machine invented by William Lee. It was called the stocking frame because it was used to knit stockings. He was denied a patent from Queen Elizabeth I because she thought that they would put hand knitters out of business. It had bearded needles, and he had eight needles to an inch, which he eventually got up to 20 needles to an inch. And let's take a quick detour to talk about knit and woven fabric. Knit fabric is stretchy and created with a single thread, making these loops going back and forth. Woven fabric is not stretchy, and it is created when a single weft thread is woven through multiple warp threads. Your t-shirt is knit, your jeans are woven. And the asterisk here is because you can make woven fabric stretchy by using stretchy fibers or cutting your garments on a 45 degree angle called the bias, but um, garment construction is a different talk. So if you're having trouble remembering this, <laughs> knitting is single threaded and woven is multi-threaded and uh, the asterisk is here because there are a couple ways to knit with multiple threads moving on so in 1804 joseph jacquard used punch cards linked together to automate patterning and weaving looms each of these holes corresponds to a set of warp threads that get lifted to create a shed for a uh, textile this is information written in a physical medium meant to be read by a machine. Now you understand where we're going with this. I assure you, you don't, but we'll get there. <laughs> and this is an example of a book woven in silk using punch cards in the 1800s. So they could get pretty intricate. And then for context, 1829, we get the first usable sewing machine. So we had all of that before we got to automate this part of garment construction. And then in 1847, we get the modern latch hook needle. Uh, this brings us the modern knitting machine and the basics haven't changed much since then. And then I couldn't find the first punch card knitting machine, but I have an antique from the 1930s that uh, did patterning with paper tape. So it was probably sometime after that. And a side note, I don't have one of these attachments. If anyone knows where I can find one outside of a museum, please let me know. All right, 1974, Brother released their first domestic punch card knitting machine. These machines were entirely mechanical. No power, no electronics. They are so cool. Um, and there's still demand for these. I bought a version of this a few years ago. Pattern repeats were 24 stitches. Each hole in a punch card corresponds to a selected needle. They could do color, texture, and lace patterns. And then in 1980, Brother released their first electronic machine. It had a four-bit processor and no real memory. Instead of punch cards, it read light and dark spots off mylar sheets. And this increased the pattern repeat from 24 stitches to 60 stitches. This is the oldest knitting machine that, that AYAB supports. This is also my first knitting machine. I bought it secondhand about five years ago, and the mylar reader was broken, which is a common issue with this model. All right, we're all oriented. We know about textile history and punch cards. Why does this matter? Because when Brother made the transition from punch cards to electronic machines, they just kind of slapped some solenoids into where the punch card reader used to be. And the rest stayed the same. And this impacts the way that we interact with the machine. So let's talk about AYAB. AYAB is an open source hardware and software project to retrofit vintage Brother machines to be controlled by computer. This is one version of the control board. The project was started about 12 years ago by two German engineers who reverse engineered the communication between the original electronics and the machine and started publishing their code on the internet. AYAB currently supports a number of the 900 series of Brother Electronic standard gauge knitting machines, including the CK35, which was the semi-industrial model, 
The gauge of a machine is how far apart the needles are. Standard gauge machines are 4.5 millimeters apart, and they work best with lace and fingering weight yarns. And in the latest release, we have support for the 270. This is the only bulky machine that Brother ever produced, and it, it was my pet project for a while. The needles are nine millimeters apart. It works best with yarn weights four and five. This is also the newest knitting machine we support. It was made in the late 90s. Sorry, the early 90s. Okay, AYAB only does patterning. You load up an image and AYAB will select the right needles for you. You need to do the rest yourself, including moving the carriage and doing shaping to make things bigger and smaller. You can do everything the original machine could do, but there are no limitations on the length or the height of a pattern. In addition, the software has a few different algorithms for sorting out multicolor jacquard uh, and can handle up to six colors for you, but we will get to that in a bit. So first, we throw away the original electronics. We don't need them. AYAB hardware connects directly to the internals. That means we can support older machines and machines where the original electronics have died. Uh, this is not destructive. You can always put the original electronics back. Here's one version of the hardware. It's a shield you can buy as a kit on Etsy and assemble yourself. It needs to be paired with an Arduino. And then we have the interface, which comes pre-assembled. The one pictured here was originally manufactured by Evil Mad Scientist. They don't make these anymore, but you can sometimes find them secondhand. And then here's the modern one. These are sold in a couple places. All right, let's talk about how all of this works. We have a PyQt desktop application that takes the image you load and sends it line by line down to the firmware on the Arduino. And then from there, we process it. So we don't know a whole lot about how the original Brother firmware worked, though there are a couple attempts to get the firmware off some of the older models. Uh, but we have learned a lot from the Brother service manuals, which are pretty amazing. And we've also reverse engineered a lot. Most of these images come from the 910 and the 930 service manuals. Let me start with the inputs. So first, the Brother Instruction Manual calls this the turn mark. It's a Hall effect sensor, and it can tell when a magnet is moving past it. And on the back of the carriages, there is a magnet. This is the uh, knit carriage. It has a north-facing magnet. The lace carriage has a south-facing magnet. The Hall sensor can tell them apart. There's also a sensor that tells us which direction the carriage is going in. And then there's belt shift, but we'll get to that in a bit. And finally, the clock line. During patterning, the carriage hooks into a timing belt on the back of the machine. And as it moves by one needle, it turns a rotary encoder. And the movement by one needle gives us a full clock cycle up and then down. And we listen for that. And this is all the information we get from the machine. And we need it all to determine the output to write to the solenoid buffer. So this is the solenoid buffer. It's only 16 bits. Um, and it's not, so even though we know what all 200 needles need to be, we can only tell the machine about them 16 bits at a time. But it's not an arbitrary 16 bits, it is a specific 16 bits. Um, so in a repeating pattern across the bed. So if we select solenoid one, we're saying that needle 100, 84, 68, et cetera, is going to be selected. Knitting machines are numbered from, numbered from the middle out, so we start at one and go out 200. Uh, which is fine if you have a 16 stitch pattern and you want it to repeat in those specific places, but most of us want things that are more interesting. So the way that we deal with this limitation is by keeping track of where the carriage is on the bed and updating the solenoid buffer slightly ahead of where it's going to be. But it's not quite that simple because it never is, because the physical patterning mechanism underneath of the bed that controls the needles can only control eight at a time. Um, and this is where belt shift comes in. This is a sensor value we get from the machine. Belt shift has been on my mind a lot, lately, a lot lately because it has about two lines in the service manual. And we had developed an understanding of what it meant kind of institutionally within the AYAB developer community, but it was wrong. It was fundamentally wrong, but it was right enough that all of the carriages that we currently had were still working. But then when I got to the point of adding support for a new carriage, had to figure it out again. So all that to say, this is my current understanding of how belt shift works, and it's a good enough abstraction that I can get things to work. So with that caveat, when the belt shift is normal, the first eight bits of the solenoid buffer are written to the machine, and when it's shifted, the second eight bits are written. Uh, we don't control this. It updates every eight needles as the carriage moves across the bed, 
we just need to do some calculations up front to figure out where the belt shift is going to be when the carriage hits the start of the needles and we can extrapolate from there. So if the belt shift is going to be regular, we need to start writing into solenoid one. And if it's shifted, we need to start writing the pattern into solenoid nine. So these are a little fuzzy because of anti-aliasing, but these, with the pattern, these are what the patterns look like. Um, uh, your tuck, slip, fair aisle, and lace works the way that it would on the original machine. Uh, but double bed jacquard is a little different. So double bed jacquard is a technique for doing color work that has no floats. It uses the main bed and the ribber to create a thick fabric with no long strings on the back that get caught on things. This is a banner I knit for a demo booth. Ignore the messy workspace. This is a punch card example for two color double bed jacquard. Domestic knitting machines only change colors on one side of the bed, so you need to knit two rows before changing the next color on a line. In the before times, you'd have to look at your color image and manually encode the different lines of your pattern, uh, even on the electronic machines with the original hardware. AYAB can do all of this for you. We currently have three different algorithms for doing double bed jacquard, and we can handle up to six colors. So these are some examples. The blue is empty needles. If you get rid of it and collapse all the colors down, you get back to your original image. But this is also knitting into the bottom bed. So for two color jacquard, it takes two passes of the carriage for every row. And then this uh, second image here is called our classic algorithm. It takes six passes of the carriage for every color. So six passes of the carriage for three color. So that's two times the number of colors. And then the next one is middle colors twice, which is four passes per row two times the number of colors minus one. And then finally, heart of Pluto, which is four passes per row, the same as before. Um, and middle colors twice came out of an, a misunderstanding of the heart of Pluto, Pluto algorithm. So we have to talk about heart of Pluto. Um, heart of Pluto is an Australian artist. She knit this star chart on a Brother 950. It's knit in multiple panels and sewn together, but this is the piece that got me into machine knitting. But she didn't knit this on AYAB. She got into her machine with a floppy drive emulator. And in the process of sorting this out, came up with a novel algorithm for double bed jacquard, which we now have implemented in AYAB called the Heart of Pluto. So here are some examples. Uh, from left to right, it's classic, middle color twice, and Heart of Pluto. You can see the classic example how stretched out the stitches are because there are more rows on the back than there are on the front. I don't have an example of two color because this dress is two color jacquard. Okay. I'm gonna stop and get philosophical here because this is a project that could only really exist as open source. These machines aren't manufactured anymore. They can only be found secondhand and the learning curve to get started is very steep. It takes a diverse set of skills to even get up and running. Though I know a couple of my other contributors are in the audience, don't really knit. <laughs> they know how to use the machine well enough to test things, but they don't really make things themselves. So we attract kind of two kinds of people. Those who bought their machines when they were new and are very familiar, but aren't as technologically savvy. We see a lot of like husbands and sons helping knitters get up and running. And then newbies like me who got interested because of the technology. And a lot of our users fit into the first category and a lot of our developers fit into the second. And we have, uh, so there's a big disconnect between the people who make AYAB and the people who use AYAB. And we have one crossover who is an old school machine knitter and used the original electronics, unlike the rest of us, and knows what the average knitter expects, and she keeps us honest. I would like to change this. I want to get more engineers involved in knitting and more knitters interested in the technology um, so there's more crossover. Because as you can see here, modern computing kind of evolved out of textiles. And I'd go as far to, as to say computers were a mistake, and we should have stuck with colorful, colorful textiles. <laughs> So that's about it. Um, here are some resources. We just released a 1.0 of the software. We're working on the next version of the hardware. If you want to get involved, come join the Discord. And if you want to find a machine and learn how to knit, I have a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel. And there's a buying guide there as well.